Hi there, so I'm going to go ahead and show you right now how to fill and prime your CIS system. So if you're setting this up for the first time and if you haven't got it pre-filled or empty, uh, this is the best way to show you how to actually fill these guys up and also prime them. Yes, so when you prime them, the whole point is to make sure that all the ink is siphoning through the tubes. I'm going to go ahead and try this today with some sublimation ink bottles that we sell. If you are curious about sublimation ink from our website, feel free to go to cisinks.com. At cisinks.com, sublimation ink is actually listed under as profes professional ink. So if you are looking for that particular ink, it is listed as professional ink. So right now I'm going to go ahead and show you the setup. So first of all, you'll notice that you have these rubber plugs. If you got them pre-filled, you already have them with you. And also an air filter you'll see here. This is important to the setup. So I'll go ahead and show you how you would fill the CIS first. I'm going to go ahead and take each color that I have here. So I got the cyan and this is for the cyan tank. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this. You have to be careful because the ink does kind of come out pretty easily and it could get on your hands if you aren't wearing any gloves. So I'm going to slowly just press and fill the system with the ink. And we're going to go ahead and show you how to prime it in just a moment here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all four colors. And you might see some of the ink actually siphoning into the, the tube sooner or later. So I'm just going to go ahead and slowly fill this up. Okay, so now that we have everything set up here filled with ink, we're going to go ahead and prime the system so that the cartridges can actually have some ink going through them. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and close the tops off here. So you have these rubber plugs, and you can kind of just align them and make sure that the colors match. I'm going to go ahead right here, place them on there. So the next step is you're, you're going to use one of these air filters, and you're going to notice that there's a thicker end to my left here and a smaller end on the, uh, the the right. You'll notice one side is thicker than the other. The thicker end is going to go down into the back hole here. So the plug is supposed to be exposed right here. That's only if you want to kind of close it and transport the system. But I'm going to go ahead and push all the way down until they go all the way in. And they're going to go into each system and each color. So you'll see that there. So this is normally how a system should look like when it's set up. Uh, make sure there's no ink trapped inside these air filters because it will cause some issues with the, uh, the the quality coming out. Same thing if you didn't have them installed or you had these plugged up. So make sure that the air filters are installed. Next, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to prime these cartridges. So when we prime these cartridges, we're going to go ahead and prime from a different amount of ways. But we're going to go ahead and, and do it from directly from the bottom of the cartridge. This is something we call a nozzle prime. It's something that's really useful when you're priming the cartridges because it also improves the, the, the print quality. 
So I'm going to go ahead and move this back here for a little bit. And I want to start with the cyan cartridge. So keep an eye on the blue line. You're going to go ahead and see all the ink starting to siphon up there. So I'm going to go ahead, puncture the plastic here, if you haven't already. Push that in. It's going to go in there right, nice and snug like this. And take a look at the lines as I draw up. You're going to get some resistance, a slight resistance while you pull up. So just kind of hold the system down. And you're going to see the ink slowly siphon as it's going right into that cartridge. And you'll see right there that it's just going to start filling the lines. And you don't want to stop until you actually get some kind of ink in the syringe. So if you pulled it all the way up and you still haven't got any ink, it's fine because you can actually just restart that method by removing the syringe, pushing the air back down, and starting all over. So you might want to do this a few times, especially if you have an empty system. I usually say at least around 4 milliliters of ink in the syringe is fine. That's just so you can make sure that all the ink is siphoned into the cartridge and through the lines and it has no air gaps in them. Because the air gaps will also cause some kind of quality issues if there's too much air in the lines. So that's around 4. I'm going to go ahead and slowly take this out. Be careful when you do take it out. I'm going to have this upside down. I'm going to remove this plug where I first filled it in. And I'm not going to waste any of the ink because I'm going to just go ahead and fill them right back onto the top of the system. It's good to make sure that you have each syringe probably labeled or at least eyeball it just to make sure that you're not mixing the inks into the syringe because you don't want to cross-contaminate colors. Once you do that, you might have an issue, especially with yellow, where they're all going to get cross-contaminated. So I'm going to go ahead and start the next one, and you're going to see that I'm going to pull the magenta color. You're going to see the line start to fill. I'm just going to kind of pull up, just hold it. I can hear it bubbling there. I'm going to go ahead and just, for safety measure, I'm just going to restart it because I don't want to have the syringe all the way up while there's barely any ink coming through. You have to be careful because there are some times where ink will start to seep through the cartridges. That's just all the pressure that's being built in there. I did forget to remind you to, to put the top back on here as well, so make sure you always do that every time you fill them back in. So I'm going to go ahead and keep priming this. Hopefully you can see here. So I'm starting to get some ink into the syringe. Just kind of hold it up. Let the pressure kind of build. There's like a vacuum here. So we got around again 4 milliliters. I usually say that's around the best spot to get the ink. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly take out the cartridge, I mean the syringe, take this top off, fill it back into the system so we're not wasting any ink, and go ahead and plug that in. Separate the syringe, and if you can, just label them just in case. It is a messy process because you have to make sure that the ink tanks aren't going to leak inside the printer, so we're going to keep going. Oh, see, I almost messed up there. I didn't, punch, I didn't puncture it, but that's what I was saying. You have to make sure you label your syringes. So this one's for yellow. Okay. You can see the yellow prime right through. Just kind of hold it up. So I'm going to go ahead and restart this. And I'm going to go ahead and just prime it and prime it again until all four colors are primed. See, if you get a resistance like this where the syringe is coming back down and no more ink is coming through, the best way to go about this is kind of hold the, the plunger up. And while it's being held up, I'm going to go ahead and twist the syringe body. As soon as you twist it, it should allow more ink to pull through. See, you can see a gush of ink in there. Kind of twist it, perhaps. I'm going to go ahead and take this out because it's done. Take the top off, refill it here, plug it back up, separate the syringe, and we're going to do the, the black color last here. I'm going to go ahead and push the syringe here, and draw from the ink, and you'll see the last color siphon into the system. And it's slowly filling the cartridge. 
not sure if you can hear that. I'm going to try it one more time just because it seems like I'm doing it twice for each one. Just so I don't have the syringe all the way up when I'm pulling more ink out. Because once you pull the plunger out, you're just going to have the ink kind of just spill everywhere. So that's good 4 milliliters. So go ahead and slowly lift up the syringe. Be very careful. Refill it back in here. Okay, so you can see that ink going back into the system. So that's how you actually prime and well, fill and prime one of these CISs. Uh, one note to actually make sure that you don't do is never raise the ink tanks higher than the printer. For any reason you set it above your printer, the gravity would cause the ink to leak. And you can already start seeing the black. See all the colors are starting to bubble? You'd see them start to leak. See how they're, see that? So you want to always make sure that they're at the same base level because anytime you raise them, it's going to cause issues where the ink may leak into your printer and you, we definitely don't want that happening. So you have to be very careful. So anytime you plan out where you want to place your CIS, I say always place it as the same base level as the printer because any higher, it's going to cause the ink to leak and also any lower, it's going to cause the ink to sink back down to the tanks and that might cause a lot of air bubbles and which could also cause quality issues when you're printing you might get some faded prints you might get some kind of issue where there's banding on the pages it's just not going to look too good so that's how you go that's how you actually fill and prime a cis so if you have any questions or any comments feel free to let us know and we'll go ahead and respond to them as best we can thank you for watching